God really met with us today, and we don't need to take that for granted. We're going to give him all the glory for that and uh, for what he did in our hearts today. I do have some announcements to make tonight before we take up the offering. Um, I announced this morning there will be no men's fellowship tomorrow night, as we previously announced. Uh, we will reschedule that. We will still be having visitation Tuesday night at 630 and pr the prayer meeting Wednesday at noon is still going there. And don't forget about Wednesday night, our discipleship classes. We'll meet at 7 for the classes. We meet at 6 for supper. And if you haven't been coming to that, I would encourage you to, uh, to figure out how to get there. It's been a great time and uh, a blessing. And we need to pray for Brother Jesse this week. He's leaving tomorrow to go up to Kentucky to the Ch National Church Growth Conference. So keep him in your prayers tomorrow as he's traveling. And Family Fun Night is September 25th. And that night we'll be having a bonfire and a cookout. And uh, we need to dress uh, to support our favorite team. Our favorite team. Um, and then Friday, October 28th, the teens are going to... Uh, he can wear Alabama. Hey, we beat them. We're fine now. You, huh? <laughs> Alabama's welcome now because... You know what happened last year. We don't have to remind you, right? <laughs> He's, he, you've got more. You got more to brag about than we do. But we're we're gonna, we're gloating in it right now, right? <laughs> Ride that way. Yes. It is <laughs> forty years. <laughs> so you better believe we're gonna abuse the privilege, right? <laughs> and he's doing it. <laughs> Amen. So don't forget about that cookout. That's the last Sunday night of this month. And that'll be a fun time that night. It's already started to be pretty fun already. Amen. Let's get ready to take up our offering, guys. I think, Mr. Bo, did you forget your plate? Oh, you got one. Okay. I saw another one over there. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for another opportunity to come to your house tonight and, uh, Lord, to worship you. We, we thank you for what you did this morning in our services. Uh, Lord, we don't want to take that for granted, Lord. When you move and you speak to hearts the way you did today, Lord, we thank you for that. And, uh, Lord, we hope that we'll, uh, we'll take what, what happened this morning and use it to make us better people and better Christians, Lord, better servants for you and make us better for the kingdom's sake. God, we ask you to meet with us again tonight. Lord, as Brother Jesse preaches, I pray that you speak to our hearts and help us. Lord, I pray you bless this offering that we're fixing to receive. We give you all the honor and the glory for everything you've done, Lord. And we'll use this offering for your honor and your glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Tonight, for a missions moment, we have uh, <coughs> my son, Raleigh. He is up in northwest Idaho. He'll probably tell you a bit about that. And uh, as usual, he'll probably be begging for money. And uh, he did me that way all his life. And uh, so, but no, he's uh, um, trying to um, start a uh, Planning a church in Northwest Idaho, and let's just, he'll probably tell you more than I can. Just wanted to come on this morning to be able to give everybody a little bit of an update and uh, kind of show you a quick glance around the property. So we've got much going on today. We were able to close yesterday. And uh, as you can see, just over here, we've got the uh, guys have uh, removed the garage door and um, are getting ready to frame in for the uh, front doors for the church and uh, making our entrance. And so we're super excited about that. And so we've got some work going on on the inside uh, as well as we'll be prepping the auditorium that has to have a, a lot of drywall work and uh, painting and stuff like that. But we're uh, able to be here and get started this morning. And then we've got um, uh, some work being done toward the road, trying to clear up some uh, road frontage. And uh, 
getting the, the space all cleaned up and, and looking pretty. And uh, we are so excited about what God has done. And uh, the property is five acres and it came with the two buildings. Uh, this one here, there's a, a shed that we'll be able to use for uh, outdoor cookouts, things of that nature. And then this building, which will be our auditorium. And then as you can see on the back, the different color there, that's an apartment that will later be Sunday school classroom and a prophet's chamber. And uh, we're just so excited about what God is doing. And uh, we've got a long way to go and a lot of work, uh, but we're thrilled to be able to do it. And we're just excited to see what God's gonna do. September 25th is gonna be our very first Sunday. And I hope you'll be praying with us. Uh, we, wanna, we need to have an addition to add some bathrooms and things of that nature. And so that's what we're trying to raise money for. We need uh, about 25,000 more dollars to be able to do our uh, renovations. And, uh, and so just pray with us that God would just work in a special and a mighty way. And, and if he would put it on your heart to give toward this, uh, we would be thrilled uh, just to be able to partner together in this particular project. And we thank you guys so much, all of you for uh, praying for us and encouraging us along the way. And uh, God's just done some miraculous things and we just rejoice at all that he's doing. And we're so thankful uh, just to see his hand working in our lives. tried in vain for 12 long years of pain is proof that there is nothing they can do but I just heard somebody say there's a healer on the way somehow I have to press my way through
appreciate that. Say amen. 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 Need to be praying for Brother Raleigh. Amen. That's a uh, it's a neat place he's got there. It looks like. Amen. A little little farm, really. A little barn turning into a church. Amen. amen. That's all right. But I'm thankful for men that are willing to take such a sacrifice to go do something like that. Amen. When you think about, uh, you know, I think about how God put me here. Amen. I don't have anything to complain about. Uh, put me in Oconee County, Georgia. You know, I mean, what do I? I and uh, old brother Raleigh's up there in the sticks and the mud trying to build a church. And I'm thankful for men like that that are, that are willing to go. Uh, there's some men that are uh, that would have pulled up on that property and looked at it and thought, man, this ain't for me. But he looks at it as an, uh, as an opportunity. And uh, we just need to help pray that the funds would come in, that they could build what they need to build. And I'm sure God will be in that. Amen. Brother Neil, he knew it was coming. <laughs> Won't you just stand right there if you would? Let's take a look at Neil. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I love you, Neil. He lost some weight today. Amen. <laughs> and uh, he's a little more aerodynamic. Amen. He probably feels like he's a little less American. He's got a wig. Uh, he's got a wig up there with him. That look, uh, amen. He looks good. He looks good. Hebrews chapter number ten tonight. I'm thankful for uh, what the Lord did this morning. Amen. Amen. And I, I was sitting there thinking, you know, um, we only have but one life to live, one opportunity. Uh, some. Shorter than others, some longer, but we. But either way, the the, the Bible uh, says that our life is but a vapor. Here for a little while, then it vanisheth away. You think about a vapor and how fast it's. You, you see it, and then it's just gone. And I thought, well, what a terrible life it would live to live in this bondage, uh, if you will, of 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 bitterness or guilt, uh, whatever the case may be, um, your whole life, and, and you say, I say your whole life, you know, I remember when I was a boy, when I thought 30 was old, I, I, I would hear 30, and I thought, man, that's like middle age, you know, that's like old man status, and now I'm 32, and I'm thinking, hey, I'm still young, you know, and, uh, and so I think about how fast it's here and then gone. And I think about uh, what if, you know, how, how bad it would be to, to live the, that short life that we have and not and, and, and live under, under this cloud, yeah. if that makes any sense. Live under this cloud of, of bondage, you know, to, to sin or, or whatever the case may be. And, uh, and I really thought about how Brother Dougie would give the devil a black eye if some of us just decided, you know, life's too short to live miserable. Amen. Life's too short to live in this, in this bondage of sin or this bondage of guilt or this bondage of... Man, how, what a black eye I'd give to the devil if some of y'all went home tonight and made that phone call or talked to that spouse or that kid or that, that, that cousin or family member and went to them and said, you know what, I was wrong. And, and, and you don't have to say you were right. That's a tough one. But you can say, you know, I, I, I made some mistakes and I did some things. I may have said some things. And you know what, I'm sorry. Life's too short to live. Uh, with us hating each other. 
boy, wouldn't that just give the devil a black eye? And I, I thought about, man, and here's why I say this. Uh, th- this past weekend, I was in, I was in North Carolina and uh, preached Sunday night. Well, Monday we were going to come home. And uh, my aunt and uncle, the one that I, you know, that raised me, grew up, I grew up with, called and said, hey, can you, uh, can you ride over, spend some time to, with us? And I said, sure. Well, they, they snuck one on me, Brother Todd. Uh, wasn't there too long. We were going to eat dinner, and my cousin showed up. Now, my cousin and I haven't spoken in seven years because we've been mad at each other. And uh, he walked through the door, and as soon as he walked in, I just I broke. And I grabbed him and just hugged him and told him I loved him. And I, and I said, listen, I, whatever it was, I'm sorry. And he said the same to me, and he just hugged me. And we just stood there and hugged and cried for a few minutes. And I said, man, this life's too, young, too, too short to stay mad and bitter at each other. I said, you know, and I, I picked up his boys. He's got two little boys, and I picked them up, and I just held them. And the first time I'd ever met them because of my anger, my frustration, and my bitterness, and, you know, I'm, I'm talking about, I dare you to find two people that were closer than us. I mean, we, we, we grew up together. I'm talking about diapers, pull-ups together, you know, uh, vacations. We, if, even, even before I moved in with them, when they went on vacation, I would go with them. Or when they would, every single day, we would call each other on the phone and watch Nickelodeon together. Wasn't even saying nothing, just listening to each other laugh at the show and, and, and then played ball together every year and played on the same rec teams and all that stuff, you know. Or lied about our addresses so we could be on the same team and all that kind of stuff. And then we got ma- I got mad at one thing seven years ago. And I've missed out on his children. I've missed out on his family. Uh, His ministry, he's pastoring. and I I haven't even celebrated that with him. I haven't fellowshiped with him. We haven't, uh, we haven't, you know, I haven't had him come preach for me, which is insane. Because if there's anybody that that would have been the first one, he would have been the first one. I haven't been to preach for him. And man, I sat there that night and we just hugged. And then later on that night, I watched our kids play together and I thought, man, how dumb are we? Our wives sat at the table and they just talked like they'd been to friends for years. And I thought, man, this life's too short for us to stay mad. And you know what it was? I'm going to be honest. It was my pride. It was my pride and nothing else. Nothing else. And so I'd hate for us to, I'd hate to see you continue on and whatever the case may be. When you could just say, you know what? I'm done done and try to make it right because this is this life is but a vapor and before you know it's going to be over and then and then we're going to stand before God and give an account for the things that we did in this life amen, amen. Hebrews chapter number 10 verse number 25 the Bible says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I'm going to read that one more time. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more 
as you see the day approaching. You know, I thought about this verse and I thought about why it would be necessary for the Lord to have this verse pinned down in Scripture. And I thought about how, uh, why, 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 because it's common sense to me. Amen. You get saved, you go to church. Amen. That's just, to me, that was just part of it. You, you get you, you come to church, you get saved at church, which you don't have to, but you get saved and then then you join the church and then you become a part of the church and then you get involved in the church and you start to uh, live your life in, in and around church. That's just how my mind worked. And like I thought about this morning, I heard the bus pull up out back and I, I love to watch them kids get off that bus. And so I, I opened my blinds and I just watched them Filing off, and then I saw Brother Diego and the whole family getting off the bus together, serving together. They're just—that's what you do. You just—you you get involved. You—you you, you start to serve. You, you get involved in the local church. And uh, but I thought about this, and I thought, why in the world would it be important uh, so much that the Lord would make sure that this verse was written down? And then as I'm looking around now. In 2022, I see, I see why. <laughs> Amen. There's a lot of churches today uh, that are, are going to church less now than they ever have before. Amen. I'll, I'll even say that Grace Baptist Church, we're going to church less now than we ever have. You say, what do you mean? Well, uh, we should probably have more revival meetings per year. Amen different youth meetings and things that we used to do in the past that we ought to be doing now. And that's, listen, that's on me, but, uh, and I see that, uh, you know, I, I remember growing up, there's always, a, there was a fall revival, there was a spring revival, there was a youth meeting, there was something going on, there was VBS and all these things. But now it just seems like it's so hard uh, to even get people to come to the one meeting. To get involved in the one meeting, so you think, well, I can't have another one. It'd be too, be too much. And you, and you think about these things, and I think about churches that I know personally, that I know that, that aren't even having a Sunday night service. They're canceling them. They're, they're just, they're not having them. They're, they're having their one service on Sunday morning, and that's it. And they're not even having Sunday night. And it has nothing to do with covid uh, because if you wanted to have church, you could have church, amen. Uh, nobody's restricted us, thank God. We have a, a good governor that hasn't restricted us or locked our doors. or Nobody's put locks and padlocks on our doors. Even during the heat of COVID, uh, uh, Governor Kemp told us pastors and religious leaders, he said, listen, I'm not going to tell you that you can't have church. Just be smart about it. And so even with that being said, uh, nobody has been forced to not have Sunday night service. But you see and hear about all these churches. And I'm not talking about something I've heard. I, I'm talking about pastors that I know personally that are not having Sunday night service anymore. It's just not, they're just canceling. And I, and, and I think about how uh, that this verse is so important. He said not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is. Because they are. They're, they're, a lot of them are. They're just quitting. They're just canceling. They're not having it. Uh, and so it says here, but exhorting one another. That's part of the church. Amen. It's to uplift and exhort. Listen, why? Because the day is approaching uh, that the Lord is coming back. Amen. And I think about also the day approaching where it might be possible uh, that we're not going to be able to have church like we have church now. You say, what do you mean, preacher? I mean that the government might get involved to the point where uh, we might not have the freedoms that we have today. If it keeps going down the same road that it's going down, there's a very good chance uh, that the government's going to get involved and try to live. Listen, they want nothing more than to shut us up. They want nothing more than to... Than to than to turn the volume down on the local church 
And they, listen, they don't want us getting together. They don't want us preaching. They don't want us singing. They don't want us doing outreach. They don't want us knocking on doors. They don't want us running buses because it goes against their agenda. And that's to get God out of this country. Amen. Uh, but I'm telling you, the day is approaching. And we need to have church more now than we ever have before. It's important. Why? We need the church. Amen. We need the church. The church is alive. The church is not just something that uh, there's something that we do. Uh, it's something that's actually alive. Amen. It's something that's uh, um, that we can be a part of. We know. I talked to uh, preach a few months ago or weeks ago about how we are the body of Christ and the church is alive and it's uh, uh, the body of Christ. Romans chapter twelve, verse number five. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members uh, one of another. The church today is alive. Amen. And we need to be a part, and we need to be active in the church. If we start to deny the church of itself, and if, it, if it's being alive, if we're not feeding the church, the church will die. Amen. And we need to feed the church. We need to pump into the church all the life that we can. Because the day is approaching. The church is a place of cleansing. It's a place of healing. Just like we saw this morning. Some people getting things right with each other. It's a place of resting. You know, some of us rest too much. We're both thought he had to get up. Yeah, that's why. Resting too hard back here. <laughs> Amen. It's a place of feeding. It's a place of meeting. It's a place where we can meet with the saints and we can meet with the Savior. We need the church. You need the church. You know, I remember when people used to make their, de their decisions in life based around the church. Everything was based upon, okay, well, we can't go to vacation this week because we're having a revival. We can't go this week because it's youth meeting. I remember, listen, I know this. This ain't popular, and I, I'm, not, I'm not preaching it as if this is something we ought to do. Because my wife would kill me because she don't like to cook on Sunday. But I remember when people didn't go out to eat. When you didn't buy gas. Yeah. You bought it Saturday night so you didn't have to stop them away Sunday. I remember when church was a thing to reverence. People would walk in and take their hat off. People would come and, and listen, they would, they would reverence the church and, and respect the church. and Listen, and that's something we ought to do. Why? Because the Bible says that Christ died for the church. Now, I'm not I know I'm not talking about the actual building itself, but this is our church. It's our place of meeting. It's a place where we come and worship. And listen, the church is important. It's essential. We should we 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 need the church today. Amen. It's a, listen. I love church. I love going to church. I I love being a part of church. I love my I love that my kids love the church. Now that might change one day, but I, I love the fact that they love church. We we went somewhere a while back. We were on a trip somewhere. We went to church and we were talking to some of the people there. And they were like, "Man, our kids hate church." And I was like, "Why?" Like, me and Kelly got in the car later. I was like, I'm glad our kids love church. Amen. I look at these, some of these kids. I, I think about Bo. Amen. Our new, our new locked and loaded armed security. Amen. If y'all ain't seen him, he's got a hog leg that he's carrying around bigger than he is. Locked and loaded, son. First day, first day he wore it, he came up to me. He says, preacher, I got you. I was like, I feel better, Bo. But I think about how much 
it look, how happy he looks at church. Amen. Man, yesterday we were out there building that deck, and those kids and boys were they were driving screws into pieces of wood with hammers and driving them into the ground. I mean, they didn't have a clue what they were doing. I look over one time and. Bo's over there with a the tape measure. He's measuring off the air conditioner. <laughs> He's just checking everything out, making sure it's up to par. And listen, we, we were just, and, and I think about, man, this is, this is what it's about. This is, this is, this is what, this is, this is how I want to raise my children. I want them to love the church. I want them, them to enjoy it. I want them, listen, my kids now, they're like, it's tomorrow church day. Because they're excited about getting to come and see their friends. And, and listen, that's, that's what this verse is. Exhorting one another. Getting together and supporting and helping each other. And meeting with the Savior. Meeting with each other. And listen, helping each other. Listen, it's important. It's important. It's unfortunate that a lot of times the church is the first thing that gets knocked out. Amen. Well, you know, we uh, we can cut this or we can cut that. We can we can do this, we can do that, but the church seems to always be the one that gets cut first. Can I say to you, whether you realize it or not, you need the church. We need each other. We need each other. A few things tonight on why we need the church. Number one, because of the duties it accomplishes. You think about what the church accomplishes in this nation. You know, and I, I've been bragging about our church all day and social media and everything yesterday. That's because I'm proud of what our church did yesterday. We were talking, we were laughing, like if everything's not square and just right, we're just going to tell them that Prince Avenue did it. <laughs> Amen. But it looked good when we got done. Amen. So we, we went ahead and put our name on it. Amen. Now think about as we were doing that, Brother Mac pulls up in his truck with a backpack full of food for that family. And I think about the duties that our, that our church is accomplishing. The souls that are being saved. The lives that are being influenced. The lives that are being changed. The people that, the people that are being impacted just by our church. And I think about, man, all the churches across this country and all the churches across this world that are being, in, the, the people that are being impacted because of, of a local Bible-believing church. And I think, man, that's something I want to be a part of. And we all want to, ought to want to be involved in uh, the local church because of what it does, the duties that it accomplishes. Number two, the deliverance that it offers. I'm saved tonight because of a local church. I'm born again, saved because of my church. Now, I, I didn't have to necessarily be in the church to be saved, but I was. Thank God. On a Wednesday night, the lights were on and the doors were open. And the altars were open. And because of that, I found deliverance from my sin because of a local church. I think about all the churches today that have uh, different kind of addiction programs and grief counseling and different kinds of bus ministries and different kinds of alcohol uh, uh, addiction and drug addiction and all these different things. All the churches across the world that have boys' homes and girls' homes and Christian schools and they have, they have all this going on. And, and, and there's kids and there's women and, and battered women's shelters and men, listen, that could come and find deliverance because of a local church. 
Not only that, but the deity that it represents. Man, we're not just representing Buddha. We're not representing 12 steps to a better you. We're representing an almighty God. Amen. We're representing the one true God. Amen. The one, hey, the one true, the one real, the only one, hey, hey, the only one that nobody in this world, nothing in this world can stand against. Hey, it doesn't matter what it is. Nothing can stand against him. Hey, we are representing the one true God. Amen. I want to be on the winning team. Amen. I don't know about you, but I like being on the winning team. Amen. We are representing, uh, listen, something that's holy, something that's righteous, something that's real. Hey, we, that's, we're representing the one true God. Not only that, but the dedication that it practices. You think about something that's been around, Brother Benny, for as long as it, the church has been around. The book of Acts. There's been religions come and go. There's been philosophies come and go. There's been speakers Orators come and go. But the church is still alive. Since its foundation in the book of Acts, it's still here. They've tried to knock it off the face of the earth multiple times. They've tried to remove it. They've tried to erase it. They've tried to eradicate it. They've tried to downplay it. They try, listen, they've tried to find it. They've tried to lock it up. They've tried to, listen, they've tried to shut it up, but they can't. The local church is still alive and it's still dedicated to doing the right thing. Amen. The dedication that it practices, which also goes along with the deep roots that it has. On Calvary, Jesus shed his blood for the church. Even, listen to me, even the loneliest of orphans can be rooted in something when it comes to the church. I'm talking about that person that has no history, no family, no life. Any, listen, he can wander in off the street, homeless, no bank account, no social security number. No money, no job, no clothes, no food. But he can wander into a local church, get saved, born again. And at that very moment, he becomes a part of something. Hey, that's right. And his family tree then becomes Calvary. <laughs> and lastly, <clears throat> this is the most important because of its defense of all that's holy and right. That's why we should protect the local church. And that's why we should be a part of it. <clears throat> because listen, there's nothing outside of the church. Listen to me. Outside of the church, there's nobody standing up for the millions of babies who are aborted every year. And, th and it was, there's a lot of conservative politicians, but why do they have that m belief? Because of their local church. It's coming from somewhere. Yeah. There's no other entity that stands against alcohol and drugs like the local church. That's right. There's no other there's no other organization that 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 strives to help homeless, feed homeless, clothe the homeless like the local church. 
And there's nothing on the face of this earth, listen, that stands for the defense of the gospel like the local church. That's right. Nothing. So we need the church. And you know, can, I, can I say this? The church needs us. Now more than ever. Come on, Dan, if you would. You know, at 16 years old, I was faced with a decision to either go with my family or stay at my church. And I chose the church. It was the greatest decision that I ever made. Nobody or nothing has ever been as good to me as the church. I love this church. I should have got some amens there. I love this church. Grace Baptist Church in Bogart, Georgia. One of the few in this area that does what we do. And I'm not saying that in a bragging, prideful way. But there's... I don't see many buses running around. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how many of them are supporting missionaries. I talked to a local pastor the other day. They're barely hanging on. Barely hanging on. But they're not running any buses. They're not trying to outreach. They're not trying to do anything. And I'm not. I'm not saying that to knock them around. Because if I was, I'd call them out. Man, this is our church. I don't care if you've been a member here for five minutes or 25 years. This is your church. This is your church. This is your place. This is your home. And I'm asking you tonight to get involved. So I'm already getting involved. Get involved. Somehow, some way. Because the church is alive. And if we if we don't feed it, if we don't, if we don't put into it, we'll not get anything out of it. Amen. And it'll die. all stand maybe you'd like to come thank the Lord tonight for what the church has been to you and how good it's been maybe you'd like to come thank the Lord that a church sent a bus to your house one day picked you up brought you to church or maybe there was a pastor who left a track on a table come by and knocked on your door and invited you to church or maybe you were raised in church your whole life maybe you need to come and thank God that there was a church to be raised in opportunity to gather together thank you for these people that have come and their faithfulness to be here on a Sunday night Lord I know they didn't have to come but they chose to I pray God that you'd bless them thank you Lord for what you what you've done in this place today and I'm thankful that we have a church that we got to see a move of God in Lord, I pray, God, that we would take pride in our church. God, that we would, God, that we would be considerate of our church. God, that we would get involved and 
jump in, both feet. And get involved and, 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 and just be a part. And be a part of that exhorting one another. Helping each other. Not trying to tear anybody down or being negative. But trying to find the good. And just trying to help and support the local church. Grace Baptist Church. I'm thankful for this place. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, I pray God that you'd bless us now as we all go our separate ways tonight. Be with us. Lord, we sure do love you. Thank you and praise you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's be seated. We'll do our J dollars. J dollars. There you come.